Hey crafty friends, I'm Amanda with Pear Blossom Press and I'm so glad you stopped by today. We are celebrating my friend Janie the Craft Princess reaching 30,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel. Woohoo, Janie, way to go. This is a hop. There is a hashtag in the title. If you click that, you'll see a list of all the different videos. There are a lot of fun interactive cards. And be sure to check out Janie's channel if you're not already familiar because she shares a lot of really cool fun folds and, and cards that you'll want to recreate yourself. Today, I'm going to make a stained glass card with our brand new Twinkle Lights. If you haven't seen these before, they're really fun. They're just like our Easy Light, except instead of the light staying on while you hold the button, they flash and they'll get out of sync, so they, they twinkle. They're pretty fun. You'll need a Twinkle Light. You'll need a push stamp, because we're going to indicate where to push the button. And then you'll want some dies that have... Um, an outline, like a, a fine little outline. This is the Monstera leaves from iCrafter, and you'll see they cut out both the shadow or the solid background piece plus the curly fancy little outline, and that's what helps gives us the stained glass look. So I've gone ahead and cut the outlines from black, I've cut the solid pieces from vellum, and then I colored them with Copic, or I'm sorry, my new Olo markers. <laughs> Um, I also went ahead and cut out my sentiment three times, uh, the shadow from black and then three layers of white. And then you can see these are the Olo colors that I used to um, color both the vellum and that top layer of the word Aloha. Now the card I'm making is a mini slimline, so it's three and a quarter by six and a quarter. You can adjust it to A2 if you prefer or whatever size you want. You'll want to take a quarter inch off the top and the side for your black layer. And then I've got a layer of vellum and a white panel that is one eighth inch shorter and narrower than the black layer, just so that we have a nice little border there. You're also going to need some double thick foam tape, and I'm excited to show you this stuff. This is this is my world's greatest foam tape. But you want either two layers of regular or double thick foam tape so that you have the same thickness as your battery. Okay, to put the card together, we're going to just grab that top white panel and then our outline dies, and we're going to cut the windows. So you'll see me just kind of figuring out out the spacing here. I'm going to put the shadow of the word down as well, just, you know, so I can figure out spacing. <laughs> Once I'm happy with this, I'm going to go ahead and I'll, I'll pull the aloha off so it doesn't get imprinted into the panel. And then I'm going to just run it through the die cutting machine. Depending on your machine, um, you may need to go back and forth a couple times with intricate dies. Uh, you don't need to save any of the cutout pieces for this project however you can for future projects. Just make sure if you got any little edge pieces that you save those. So you can see I've got that one little kind of triangle from the center. I'm making sure to save that. And then we're not gonna glue it together yet. Um, it, it does get a little bit, uh, when you cut off, like cut apart the tops and the, the sides, then your rectangle isn't super stable anymore. So, um, what I'm going to do is just kind of line everything up and I'll put those shadow pieces, just drop them in and kind of make sure that it's, you know, fairly straight. And I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark where I want my lights to be on the black panel. This is why you don't want to glue it to the, the vellum just yet because you want to be able to mark through. So I'm kind of deciding where I want the lights. That center leaf, I wasn't sure if I wanted it towards the top or the bottom. And then I also need to mark on my panel where the word push will, or, or I'm sorry, where the button will be for the, the, the light. So you can see I just marked on the black panel. I hovered my pencil over the white, moved it out of the way, and then marked on the, the black panel. So on the panel, you can see I've got the dots for my lights and the dot for the button. And we're, we'll set that aside for just a second and we can glue our stained glass piece together now. And if your die does not have like solid back pieces um, for your stained glass, uh, you can just go ahead and color onto another solid piece of vellum, but mine had them, so that made this really convenient and easy. And I'm just gonna glue the outlines to the solid pieces and again, they can stretch a little bit because they're just, it's really skinny lines. Um, so I went ahead and got those all glued together. And then now 
Before I glue to the vellum, I'm just going to start kind of dry fitting it in there and making sure that any of the little white pieces from the leaves kind of tuck in to the, um, to the outline of the leaf itself. This way, your panel is more likely to be squared up. And then I'll flip it over and I'm going to work from the back side and you'll see me just kind of fidget with this because you can see how it's kind of loose. <laughs> it, it kind of loosens up. Um, so I'm just going to use some glue. I strongly suggest wet glue for this because you do need that wiggle and adjustment time. Um, don't put glue on the vellum where it would show through. So I'm only putting it on the where the black outlines are, um, not on the transparent parts of the leaves. And then I just kind of put it all over the place. You can use a pokey tool to help get stuff lined up just right. And then I can go ahead and stick the back vellum sheet on top. Now, it probably would have actually been easier <laughs> to just color on the other piece of vellum. Um, but do do use two, piece, two layers of vellum for this because these are big windows. If you have a smaller window, it doesn't really matter. One layer of vellum is fine. But for larger windows like this, two layers of vellum will diffuse the light a little bit more, help spread it out so that you don't get hot spots so much. And now you can see I'm just kind of trimming off my vellum because I didn't get that perfect. And then for that leaf, I want larger scissors just so that I can get a nice straight cut all the way across. And take your time, make sure this looks pretty because this is sort of a, a fairly clean and simple layout. So make it look pretty because small details will matter here. Okay, now we can play with the lights. So I'm just going to bring in some score tape. I had this really narrow stuff on my desk, so I put two little strips of it. Probably one strip was fine. I'm just going to tape this down to the black piece, and I'm lining up that button down at the bottom where my pencil mark was. And then I've got um, scotch tape. Just regular old scotch tape will work here because we're going to glue the lights on the other dots. And be careful with your tape. You don't want to have it extend out to the edge where it will be seen. Um, we're, I mean, it's just going to be hidden here. I have a narrow border, like I think it's a 16th of an inch border. So as long as I stay at least a 16th of an inch away from the edges, you won't see that tape. And I'm just going to tape these guys down and I'm going to test them out here before I deal with the rest of the wires. And I decided that I didn't really like that middle light near the first dot, and I probably didn't want it at the second dot either, because I kind of had one at the beginning and at the end of the stem, and I opted for somewhere in between. So I like that now. And then all the loose bits of wire, I'm just going to kind of gently curl them up and flatten them out here and tape them down. You don't want to put any really harsh like folds in the wires because you could accidentally break them. Um, they are copper wires inside a plastic case. So just be careful not to actually break the copper. Um, and then I just, it's not, it doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you just want to get it out of the way. Um, we do need to stamp the word push on that white panel. So you saw me take a pencil and mark where the button is. I'm going to grab that word, the push stamp from the interactive label set here. And I'll line that up over my dot. And I'm going to erase the pencil mark now before I ink it up just so it doesn't smear and we can get rid of the pencil mark. It's always a good idea with small words like this to stamp and give it a really light touch. So it's, it's better to stamp twice with a real light touch than to push down really hard once and smush those words. So I stamped it twice. And then now we're going to bring in the double thick foam tape. Again, if you don't have a double thick foam tape, use two layers of regular foam tape. But I am super excited about this one, you guys. This is like two years in the making. <laughs> and this is actually a prototype roll that you see here. Um, but I've been working on what I'm calling the world's greatest foam tape because it is um, repositionable at first. So you've got 30 minutes 
of working time before it starts becoming permanent. And then um, check it out. The release paper comes off super easy. Even I've got a Band-Aid on my thumb there and it's still just popping off no problem. Um, so I, I'm super excited about this. We should have it in the shop in the middle of May. Fingers crossed. <laughs> and notice that I didn't put any where my battery is. So I've got it kind of everywhere else and not over the windows. And you could see if I needed to, I could pull that right up um, and stick it back down. But I didn't need to in this case. All right, to finish up this card, we're just going to glue this panel to our card. And then if this were a masculine card, I could probably just add the sentiment and stop, but I want a little more bling. Um, and obviously my sentiment here. I do like a stacked sentiment. So you see, I've got three layers of the word Aloha, the colorful one on top, and then the shadow on the back. I will glue that in place. And now is where my bling comes in. <laughs> I've got a pretty little sparkle mix from Heffy Doodle that has some of those same kind of soft teal and purple tones and some clear and white iridescent. Um, so I'll just lay some of those out. And I don't know about you, but when it comes time to putting on the, the sparkly parts, sometimes it takes as long as putting the whole card together. <laughs> I don't know why I can't figure out where to put sequins. But once I was happy with it, I glued them down and that finished up this card. It does fit into a number seven coin envelope. They're pretty common and they come in lots of different colors. So that's why I use this size for my mini slim lines. But I think this is fun. And unlike a regular stained glass where the light would just stay on if you used our easy lights, I like it with the twinkles. Now, don't forget today's video is part of a hop. There's prizes and everything. Um, so just hit that hashtag Janie the Craft Princess 30K celebration in the title and you'll see all the videos. If you're new here, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. <laughs>